How you doing, woodworker? Today, I'm gonna learn how to use epoxy. I've never used it before. This may be an epic fail. Let's find out. So Total Bolt reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to try some epoxy. They would send me an example. I thought, why not? So they sent me a little swag bag. Country boy, we gotta get that, gotta get that hat shape. This is not a sponsored video. They have no idea I'm even doing this. I thought I've never used epoxy, so why not learn on camera? So how many of you remember the mallet build? I embedded that 10 commandments coin on both sides. Now, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's pretty interesting. I, I'm really proud of how these come out. Tabletop epoxy, got some instructions. That's good, because I'm probably gonna need them. So we got uh, clear resin part A and the hardener part B. It says one to one mix ratio. So I know that this stuff is supposed to be at a certain temperature so that it cures correctly, especially the deeper pores. If you've ever went and watched John Malecki, he has a ton of epoxy videos and that's where I've done most of my studying for the last day or two. Yes, I do love my wife. She's awesome. So this is my first time using any kind of epoxy. So if you do see me screwing up, just yell it at the screen, I'll probably hear it. And if I don't, you can just comment below that I'm screwing up royally. Move that heater back, toasting the old buns. So a one-to-one -one ratio, if we do four ounces, I can do two of part A, two of part B. This is part A. It's thick, like snot. That ain't gonna filter, how's that gonna filter? That's not gonna filter, is it? Is this stuff too cold? I probably should have had this stored indoors. Ugh, that stinks. Oh, this is much thinner, much thinner. I can see already. I probably should have measured better. Hey Siri, two minute timer. This is, looks kind of milky. How are you supposed to pour it if it's that thick? So this is really milky. I'm actually a little concerned to just slop it on that coin. So I made a, I made a test hole. I think I mixed it wrong or it's too cold. I feel like this is an epic fail. Maybe not epic since I didn't. Uh... See, I, th I think it's supposed to be a lot thinner. Is it not mixed well enough? I don't know. So that's our test piece. We'll have to let that dry a little bit. Yeah, this is gonna be harder than I thought. I think this is gonna turn out too milky because it was too cold when I first mixed it. So let's try again. I just wanna try it again. I, so I warmed this up and it is much thinner now. So I think it was just too cold earlier. And I wanna make sure to get the ratios right this time. Just a dab of me. right there. So that's two ounces of part A. Oh, two ounces part B. Hey Siri, two minute timer. So it says to mix for one to two minutes, then transfer to another container. I'm not real sure why, but that's what we're doing. Then you let it set for one to two minutes in that container to allow the air bubbles to rise to the surface. No wait, transfer a second to container, mix for one to two minutes again. This time it looks a lot more clear, but it still has a cloudy look to it. Cause our original pour is really milky, but there's quite a bit of difference in the way that looked versus the way this looks. All right, so I've let it set for about two minutes inside this cup. It looks much better. Still not really clear. I'm a little nervous. Here goes. Should I, should I even do, should I do this y'all? Oh man. Mm. If, it, if, it, if it works, it's gonna be awesome. But if it don't, oh my goodness, epic fail. I did get the temperature up to 65 degrees. Oh, here we go. 65 degrees in here. So uh, the temperature is much, much better. Of course I'll have, oh no, 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 no. Oh. Can I even wipe that? Should I even mess with it? What should I do folks? I overfilled it y'all. We're gonna let that set 10 minutes then use that heat gun, but it looks like it's gonna be really clear if the bubbles come out. If the bubbles come out. So I've got this old Wagner, Wagoner, this old Wagoner heat gun. Ready? It's gonna make a nervous. I immediately saw a bunch of bubbles either come out or something. Hey y'all, let me tell you, 
It's clear. It's like perfectly clear. When I hit it with that heat gun, all of those bubbles went whoop and come right out. Man, that's, that's pretty cool. The only concern I have now is it is flooded outside of my pour area, which I was actually a little concerned it was gonna do anyway. I gotta do a little research on how to sand that and keep it clear. I must, I think I can do it. I think I saw someone do a clear and sand it back flush and then was able to get that clear back. I think I, think I can. So we're gonna let that dry for a few hours. Four hours, tack free. And then once it is not tacky, I will flip it over and do the other side, which means I'll have to make up another pour. Cause it's looking good. So five hour update on this first epoxy project. Cause it's still kind of gooey and like honey, about the consistency, you like honey? I love honey. It's like the consistency of honey. So uh, I'm hoping that I can do this and knock that air bubble out. But so far, what do you guys think? It's pretty clear. The original one I mixed up that I didn't get completely um, mixed one to one. It was more like one and a quarter to one or something. It's not clear. You see that it's actually kind of foggy. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. It is also tacky. Like that. Too much, too much, too much. So I've been told I need a, a very high grit uh, sandpaper to polish it back out. And I don't have any other than this sanding block paper. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to attempt to make some. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this is just an old piece. I'm gonna throw some CA glue on this thing and I'm gonna try to make my own, my own paper. What do you guys think? Is this gonna work? <laughs> I don't think so, but I'm gonna try. We'll let that dry. <laughs> I have no idea, that may not even work. We'll let that dry while we start sanding this with a, a lower grit paper. Man, I'm nervous about this. Cause it looks so good, I'm scared I'm gonna mess it up. Ah, it's probably gonna be a disaster. Did it stick? It's stuck. So this, it may work, it may work. Ye old bench cookies, throw those under there. They give me something solid to set that on while I start sanding. <laughs> I'm nervous. Who else is nervous? Because I know it's going to fog over when I start. RZ mask. I don't want to stand this epoxy without a, a mask. I did 60 grit and then 120 grit, and now I'm going to do 220 before I try to polish it up with that uh, 3000 grit. It sanded smooth and a lot easier than I thought. So you can see, and I'm gonna get you a little B-roll right here. You can see that little bit of imperfection there. That's where it's dipped in. I didn't get enough epoxy in there. So it's really better to, uh, so far that I've found, to overfill than it is to underfill. But you can see that it's still foggy and that's after doing 60 grit, 120 and then 220. And now I'm going to try my homemade piece of 3000 grit. Hmm. So it's still just a tiny bit foggy. And I think that's because uh, I skipped quite a bit of grit when I'm sanding. Brought a little cup of water out here. Try. All right, so I got some 400 grit paper. It's actually sand net, that Diablo sand net. It's 400 grit. I'm gonna try that and then jump to the 1000 grit. Cause 
couple of things I just learned. Y'all, it's, <laughs> look, it's starting to come back. And uh, the key ingredient is properly step through the sanding grits. Because when you do that, it's eliminating those uh, coarse scratches and making them finer and finer and finer until it's polished, right? And so I'm at, I went back and found a 400 grit sandpaper. Now I'm gonna do the 1,000 grit, uh, 3,000 grit, that's all I got. And uh, so if, if I was doing this again, I would get me some sandpaper in steps all the way up to, you know, 1,000 or 1,500 grit, and then the final polish at 300 or 3,000 grit with the wet sand. But so far, I, I like what I see so far. And so I'm hoping that this final sand will make everything clear. Let's find out. So I might have to do a little more research, but when you put water on it, she's clear, she's crystal clear. And when you don't, it has a little haze on it. I mean, it's smooth, uh, very smooth. That one imperfection on the bottom where that, I think it was an air bubble come out is what happened. Pretty cool project though. According to my vast research on Google, I need polishing compound to get that back where it goes and I don't have any, but I do have some Blue Magic metal polish. I know you're thinking metal, but it says plexiglass and fiberglass. This is close to that, right? In case y'all don't know, this stuff is awesome for polishing up your brass if you wear uniforms with metal buttons. Uh, I would assume it would need a high speed. So I'm gonna tear it on the, whatever this is, uh, on the sander. Woo wee! Ha! Hey, I ain't gotta call me a genius, but uh, <laughs> that worked. Ooh, that's crystal clear too, man. That looks good. Mm. I'm actually really shocked that this come out as well as it has. Of course, I still gotta put that Odie's oil on there to finish it up to get that color back in the wood. But man, I mean, I'm gonna flip it. Look, that's the one side that's been polished and this is the side that has not been polished yet. So you see there's a clear difference in that fogginess versus the clearness of Blue Magic. Disregard the rag on here trick. It doesn't work if it's got strings hanging off of it. So I just got a blop of that Blue Magic on there. Uh, I really want to use my sander again, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. Good news, sander's not needed. Whoa, we that look good, man. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Jeez, that is really, really cool. I hate that that bubble would come in there on that one. Obviously on pour one, the first pour I did, I don't think it was mixed exactly one to one. I think it was more like 1.25 to one. And so I did get some very, very fine air bubbles uh, down in the epoxy. And you can see that uh, on this side here with the cross. And on the other side with the Ten Commandments, you can see that it's much more clear. And that was my second pour. Uh, I learned a lot between the first uh, two. So mix it properly, mix it properly, mix it properly. Also, I took it inside after it was outside for a little bit. And it was about 60 degrees in the shop. I took it inside where it was about 72. And that helped it cure a lot better. And so on the second pour, I poured it inside, did I pour it? No, I poured it outside, and then I just took it immediately inside and let it cure. So having that right temperature and the right mix is very, very, very important. But now I'm gonna use this Odie's oil, just like I did on the mallet build video. Some really good stuff. It lasts a very long time. I've already used, I've only used about a, not even a, a half of it, and I've used it on a ton of projects. So a little bit of this goes a very, a very long way. You just put it on with a terry cloth and you just dab it on there. And so you just start putting it on and then 45 minutes, no more than 45 minutes later, we'll come back and we'll wipe it off. And being that it's just an oil, it should not affect the finish of that epoxy at all. If anything, it should give it a more uh, glossier shine. I'm actually very happy with how this turned out. 
Man, it looks good. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. So while the Odie's is curing, before I buff that off and show you the final product, let me tell you what I learned about using epoxy. Total Bolt did not put these instructions in there as a suggestion. <laughs> you got to follow those things to the T, because if you don't, it don't come out right. It's just the way it is. You see that test pour I made on the little hole, I just drilled a hole and poured it in there. That was not mixed right at all. I just kind of winged it. Uh, didn't even really use their measurement guide, the one-to-one, -one, and it come out extremely foggy. So on the second pour, the actual first pour on this mallet, on the cross side of the Ten Commandments coin, what happened was, what happened was I, I thought I was mixing it properly. I used uh, the guide. So Total Boat sent some cups that have guides on them, and I used the two and four ounce. So I poured the part one to two and the part two to four ounce, and then when I and it really wasn't exactly right. It was kind of close. And so I got, uh, you can see here on the cross side that it has some uh, bubbles in there, some really, really fine bubbles. And then of course I had the air bubble pop out on me and uh, leave that little dimple in there. But you can see that the, the, it has some really fine bubbles. If you move back, you really can't see it. But if you come in close, you can really, really see those tiny bubbles. And then on the 10 Commandments side, when I done my pour, I used the one-to-one -one ratio guide that I actually didn't see until I was mixing the second pour. But part one up to the one line, part two up to the two line, and then when I poured it, let it cure properly, it come out uh, much, much better. You can see that there are, it's about as clear as glass, and it's, it's probably not perfect, but it's, it's really close and I was really happy with how that come out. I do have an idea for another project using epoxy that's similar to this, but quite different. If you wanna see that project, comment below and let me know that. Now, a couple of other things that I learned about the epoxy is, for one, the temperature has to be exactly right. That 70 to 80 degree range, it needs to be there. I started it in the shop, the shop was around 50, and so I took it inside, laid it on the table. I poured the first pour on a Thursday, the second pour didn't happen again until Saturday, and then today is Monday, and so it actually had 48 hours between pours for it to fully cure before I sanded it. Sanding it, when I started sanding this back down, I thought it was gonna be much more difficult. I had some suggestions that you could heat it and use a scraper to scrape. I watched some videos on that, and while a good idea of filling cracks, I was worried that if I did that on something like this, especially a clear epoxy, that it would actually make some marks or striations in there, so I decided not to do that and just go with sandpaper. If you're gonna sand it like this, have proper sanding uh, grits all the way up to 1,000 or 1,500 grit is what's recommended. Just taking those steps up through the grits will take away those fine scratches. And once I was up to that 1,000 grit, or took my steps up through 400 and then jumped to 3,000 grit, it polished up just fine. And then of course you need some polishing compound, which I had no idea I was going to need or I would have ordered some or bought some, but I did have that Blue Magic metal polish. And it polished up nice. I mean, it is really nice and crystal clear. One last thing that I did learn about the epoxy is I store it indoors now and not out here in the shop because when it's 40, 50 degrees out here, it's really, really thick, especially that part one. So I just store it inside now in a nice safe place so that it's nice and warm and toasty when I get ready to use it. Uh, this is the last of those mallets that I had that I built on that video. If you go back and watch that video uh, on making those mallets, you can make your own like this, or I'm gonna give this to somebody. So wax on, wax off. It's really short. Uh, I, I don't know, sometimes I'm proud of what I make. Sometimes I throw it in the fire. And this one, I like it. So this project is not perfect, it's just fitting. Like I've said before, I'm an imperfect being. This is the first time I've ever used this epoxy and I'm happy with that come out for the first attempt, which is why I went with a small project like this. Hey, it's all good, man. Those holes are filled in now. This mallet looks more finished than it did before I used the epoxy. I learned a lot. The next time I use it, I'll know better than to try to wing it on my own and to follow the directions. I'm a guy, what can I say? We don't follow directions very well. Most of the time we don't even read the directions. Hey, so Total Boat, I reached out to them while I was making this video actually and said, hey, would you be willing to give a winner of a contest 
some resin. And so they graciously agreed to do so, and they're gonna give you a quart of resin and a quart of hardener, and you can go and make your own epoxy projects as well as win this mallet. So if you're interested, check the link in the description below on how to enter the giveaway. One winner, this is a US only giveaway. Uh, hazmat regulations prevent them from shipping uh, outside the US. And then I don't really know the rules of giveaways outside the US either. So it works out for both of us. Sorry for my international viewers. I'm, I really am sorry. I, I wish I could give you guys some stuff too. Maybe someday. Hey, thank you for watching. Click that box right there. Take you to the next set of videos. If you click that box, you get that big old virtual fist pump. You can also click that box right there to take you to the mallet build video, show you how to make these mallets. I appreciate you watching. If you have not subscribed already, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Thank you guys very much for watching.